السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Praise be to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear viewers, welcome to the first episode of Ask Huda during the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah enable all of us to witness this blessed month in the best health. And Iman. Amen. Um, as you all know that, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah and through uh, the help of some of the sponsors, Masha'Allah, we will be airing Ask Huda live five days every week during Ramadan, same time, 5 p.m. Mecca time, 2 p.m. GMT, 4 p.m. Uh, Cairo time. And that will be from Sunday through Thursday, inshallah. Our phone number should appear on the bottom of the screen, area code 002. <coughs> then 01005469323. Alternatively, area code 002, then 02385532. We welcome your questions and your concerns. MashaAllah, we've received uh, already many comments and warm welcomes. And once we start receiving uh, your questions, inshallah, I'll be happy to answer them in the same order they were received. And some of the questions which we have received. <coughs> uh, the first question is uh, from Ozma Ahmed. On behalf of my one of my sisters, she is having an ultrasound on her uterus during Ramadan. And uh, she will be fasting. She was wondering if she's allowed to do the ultrasound on the uterus during fasting. Yes, it is permissible, and it does not violate the fasting. The medical insertion, uh, even while fasting, is not one of the acts which violate uh, fasting. I would like to remind myself and my dear viewers that it is best to make certain that the medical examiner should be a female or examining uh, a female, and also the aura should be covered to the best of your ability and only the body part which needs to be checked out or the ultrasound needs to be done on it could be exposed for this necessity only. May Allah make it easy for all of us to observe our religious duties towards Allah and most importantly take care of covering our aura. Ameen. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, we're having a question about the recitation of Surah Al-Fatih. Najib, hero, is asking, is there a hadith uh, which we received on the WhatsApp messages that if you read Surah Al-Fatih on the first night of Ramadan, Allah will protect you uh, throughout the rest of Ramadan. Uh, is this hadith sound? No, this is not a hadith. And this practice is one of the common innovation practices uh, in the beginning of Ramadan. Uh, they say you pray two rak'ahs, you recite in the first rak'ah Surah Al-Fatih, and you recite in the second rak'ah 100 times Surah Al-Ikhlas, and after you finish you do this and that. And also there is a specific prayer on the night of Al-Qadr. You recite 12 rak'ahs, and uh, you offer 12 rak'ahs, and each rak'ah you recite that many surahs. All of that is baseless. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Ramadan has begun on the first night of it. He said that on the very first night of Ramadan, تُغَلَّقُ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَا يُفْتَحُ مِنْهَا بَاب This is what he said. All the gates of hell will be closed and not a single gate will be open, will remain open. And also all the gates of heaven will be wide open and not a single gate of the gates of heaven will be closed. And as you know that the gates of hell are seven and the gates of heaven are eight. And he also said, وَتُصَفَّدُ الشَّيَاطِينَ Satan's will be chained and will be locked down 
In another hadith, he said, Maradatu shayateen, which refers to the most rebellious of the jinn, not all satans. Then on every single night of Ramadan, yunadi munadin, a caller from heaven would proclaim by the leave of Allah the following message. Ya baghi al-sharri aqsar, ya baghi al-khayri aqbil. Ya baghi al-khayri aqbil, O seeker of goodness, come forward. This is a season to increase the balance of your good deeds and to earn as much hasanat as possible, to double your reward during Ramadan and triple it. Ya baghi al-sharri aqsar, O seeker of evil, cease, stop. This is a time to repent. This is a time to return to Allah the Almighty. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَلِلَّهِ فِيهِ عُتَقَى وَذَلِكَ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ On every single night of Ramadan, Allah the Almighty will release and free people from hellfire. On every single night. This is the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said with regards to the beginning of Ramadan, which will last with us until the end of Ramadan, insha'Allah. May Allah make it easy for us to observe its fasting, its qiyam, and the recitation of the Qur'an, and to make Ramadan truly a turning point in our lives. So the practice of reciting Surah Al-Fatih, uh, particularly in the first night of Ramadan, to secure your risk and your health throughout Ramadan or the rest of the year, is uh, truly baseless. And this practice is pure innovation. May Allah guide us to what is best. Um, Abdul Razak Omar just delivered a question and again I would like to remind the viewers it is a lot better to give us a call and the phone numbers should appear again on the bottom of the screen for an easy access okay uh, Abdul Razak is asking on one hadith near the end of time a man would be a believer during the evening and uh, an unbeliever at the uh, during at the end of the day and would be a believer in the morning and disbelieve in the evening can he elaborate on the ways which person becomes a disbeliever so rapidly yes of course um, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said you should be quick to do good deeds and to race towards doing righteous deeds not only the fara'id but also the voluntary acts of worship before the time will come where the tribulations, fitan and trial will be so widespread that يُصْبِحُ الْمَرْءُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا وَيُصْبِحُ مُؤْمِنًا يَبِيعُ دِينَهُ بِعَرَضٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا This is a prophecy and it is a very serious warning. Most frequently recited dua of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was, O oh Allah, the one who changes the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. Remaining steadfast on the straight path is the most important task for a believer in this life. Because the hearts do change. And we have seen people who one day were praying, were religiously committed, and they just all of a sudden, for a reason or, or another, um, they slipped off the road. They abandoned religious practices. I know a person personally who used to lead the prayer in the States and he would make people cry while he was reciting the Quran. I have witnessed that a few times. Then what happened after this call? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Fahim from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Fahim from Nigeria. Ya Fahim, welcome to the program. Welcome to Ask Oda. Happy yeah. and blessed Ramadan to you and to your family. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, through you, Sheikh, I want to uh, say happy Ramadan to everybody in this planet, all the Muslim Ummah, and you too. Same to you, Brother and, Fahim. Uh, yeah. And uh, Sheikh, I have a question concerning, we call it Sana. Uh, uh, after uh, takbir of prayer, we recite it. Uh, uh, is it uh, there anywhere in the Islam? Because our Sheikh, uh, I mean, uh, the Imams in Bangladesh, they are saying that uh, 
you will have to read this sana. Okay. Can you say uh, it? Do you know what that uh, Yes. Can you read it? Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la okay. ilaha gairuka. Got it. Okay. I got that. So, I mean, uh, do I need to uh, say it before I start uh, uh, Surah al Fatiha or I don't need to say anything like that? Okay. Got it. Thank you for uh, me. And uh, that is it, Sheikh. Uh, that's what I want to confirm, actually. All right. Thank you. And yes. happy and blessed Ramadan to you Sheikh. and to your family. Jazana wa iyakum. Thank you. All right. That is called Sana, which is praise. And that is different than sana with the seen, which is as prescribed by the Prophet ﷺ in multiple ahadith. It is known as the beginning supplication in the prayer or dua ul istiftah. You begin your prayer by praising Allah the Almighty, by saluting Allah the Almighty, by glorifying the Almighty Allah, by reciting any of the prescribed supplications in this regard, such as Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik. Uh, you may also say that Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna dhunubi kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriqi wa al-maghrib the rest of the supplication <coughs> you can also recite قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ and so on all these supplications whether you recite them all or you recite one of them at a time or if you don't recite them at all it's simply recommended it's a sunnah and it doesn't affect the validity of the prayer so what does it do you begin your prayer by this um, thana praising Allah the Almighty you receive a reward for that for practicing the sunnah it is recommended not mandatory okay barakallah fikum so if somebody even forgot it doesn't have to pray the two prostrations for forgetfulness and if you leave it deliberately you're not uh, required to do the sujood as well <coughs> so Abdul Razak Umar talking about the hadith which is very scary how people would change so fast I said about one example we have seen many one example of a person who is very righteous he used to lead the prayer somehow he got married to a non-muslim woman and he slowly stopped coming to the masjid and he even stopped coming for the Jumu'ah prayer. For weeks, he wouldn't come, and for months. So I asked about him, and I started trying to visit him, not just myself and others. He opened the shop where he started selling cigarettes and other things which Allah has forbidden after he used to be a religious leader, after he used to be very righteous and pious, and he would give a speech. He quit praying. What happened? Dunya infiltrated his heart. Each and every one of us is subject to fit and trial. We have to immune ourselves against that by constantly praying, by constantly asking Allah the Almighty, as the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deeni. O Allah, the one who changes the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. Remaining steadfast on the straight path secures you the greatest reward ever. In Surah Fussilat, Allah the Almighty said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ So those who say our Lord is Allah and they remain steadfast. They do not change. What happens to them? At the time of death, the angels will descend upon them to assure them and share with them the glad tidings. La takhafu, do not be afraid of the future. La tahzanu, concerning the, 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 the past and what you're leaving behind. Wife, children, do not be grieved. They will be secure and you are going to a better place. You're not going to miss them. Wa abishiru bil jannati lati kuntum tu'adun and rejoice. Receive the glad tidings. You will enter paradise which you have been promised. That is for those who maintain steadfastness, stability on the straight path. We keep asking Allah <coughs> every day. 17 times a day we say, 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم جايد اس تو ذا ستريت باث جايد اس تو ذا ستريت باث سو ذات از سمثينج فيري امبورتنت ذا مور بيبل ار بين اكسبوز تو فتن تو ترايلز تو تيمتيشنز تو وورلي تيمتيشنز اند ديزايرز ذا مور ذا سبجكت ذي ار تو تشينج تو تشينج ايفن ذير دين سو ماي الله سبحانه وتعالى بروتكت اس اجينست ذات Um, Idris Sahima is saying, I have a question. Now that it is Ramadan and the faithful fast, what about the jinns, spirits? Do they now fast the jinn who are Muslim? Jazakallah khairan. Yes. In Surah Al Jinni, Allah the Almighty informed us that the jinn are mukallafeen, like human beings. The only two species, the only two creations who are given the free choice and also being mukallafeen, yani demanded by Allah the Almighty to worship and they have the choice to believe or to disbelieve, to worship or <coughs> not to worship, <coughs> are the human beings and the jinn. Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created both the jinn kind and the ins kind, but to worship me. Surah Al-Jinn speaks in details about that, and they are even given da'wah and so on. Whether they observe the same fasting like us and everything like us, or they have a different worship, that is unseen to us. But we know that they do worship. Okay? <coughs> Sister Mona Alwi is asking, okay, let me take a call first. Assalamu alaikum, then I'll get back to you, Sister Mona. Assalamu alaikum. Bu'aisha from Sudan, Assalamu alaikum, and welcome to Ask Wada. Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak to you, Sheikh, and the public listening and watching, inshallah. Ameen, same to you, brother. Many more Ramadan. Same to you, brother Abu Aisha. Inshallah. I have three questions. One of them is uh, just wanted to know the minimum time allowed between the end of Suhoor and uh, Fajr Azan. Okay. And the second one, uh, doing good during Ramadan, like, okay, if you want to share a little bit with the uh, relatives or with the poor in the community you live, especially if you are not living with your family, because some people are saying whatever you do, it's better you do, to your, do it for your family immediate relatives or close relatives that is better than doing it for others even though they are poor. So I just wanted to confirm whether this do, do you person is right or not. Do you know doing good. Like for example, if you want to give sadaqa or you want to help the poor. Mm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then the third question is uh, I know that Ramadan is the month of Quran and we all want to recite, but just wanted to be sure which one is the best, reciting to understand or reciting just to complete the Quran during the month. Which one is better? Okay. Or should I say which one is the best? Mm -hmm. Got your questions, Abu Aisha? Got three of your questions? Barakallah <laughs> fikum. Uh, as I said, once again, I encourage the viewers to return back to call us live on these numbers instead of just uh, sending me messages on the page. I will do, inshallah, um, answer these questions which I receive on the page right now, but the priority is for the phone calls. That's why we're having live and we're paying tons of money to uh, air this program uh, live uh, on the Nile set for the time being. And the signal, mashallah, is being aired on other uh, media platforms. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all. Uh, so um, <coughs> Abu Aisha from Sudan, what I his first question is, what is the minimum time between Suhoor and Fajr? None. What do you mean none? Once you hear the Adhan, you stop eating and that's it. Yani, you're not required to stop eating five times before Fajr, or four minutes, or three minutes. It is recommended to finish eating, have your uh, dudba tea or cup of tea, brush your teeth and get ready, recite your adhkar. But if a person happened to keep eating until he heard the fajr, then he stopped. Once he hear the fajr, the adhan, you stop. 
it is recommended to leave some time so that you would not have any remains of food or drink in your water uh, or water in your mouth because this is very risky. What is the reference? The Almighty Allah says in the ayah, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ The idea of making certain that this is done is sorted out through having, mashaAllah, the timing. We have the prayer time, so we know that Fajr is at 3.30 a.m. for innocence. 3.30, you stop eating and drinking. You stop having in an intimate relationship. You begin fasting. So 3.29, and the adhan is not cold, you can eat and drink. You only allow some time as it is recommended, not a must. Hatta means until. So the companions will eat and drink, but when they hear the adhan, hmm? because Bilal ibn Rabah used to call the first adhan, which is like 10, 15 minutes before uh, the actual adhan, which will be called by Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, who was a blind man. They would tell him, it's time for Fajr. So you'd say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, do not let the adhan of Bilal stop you from eating and drinking because this is just to alert you. The actual adhan for the real fajr is what is called by Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum at that you stop eating and drinking and you begin fasting. What we see in some of the uh, timetables, prayer times and schedules where it says the five daily prayers, the timing, and the add Ramadan, another time which is called Imsak. It's simply to recommend to you to keep some time, a chance after having suhoor and before the adhan. Otherwise, you do not abide by that because it's not a must. Okay? So if you ended up, you, you, you got up five minutes before Fajr. You need to grab a drink of water. Go ahead and drink. No problem. Uh, can I take a few days of Qajus so that because I didn't get to have suhoor, we can even eat. As long as the Adhan is not being called yet, or the time of Adhan, if you are in a locality where you cannot hear the Adhan, once you see the time and it's not time yet, go ahead and eat. Secondly, with regards to giving a charity during Ramadan, and some people say you better give it to your family, basically giving a charity to family members, those who are eligible, whether the zakah or the voluntary charity, the priority in general, whether in Ramadan, or any other time is to the relatives. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that as sadaqatu ala al-qareebi salatun wa sadaqa. You receive double reward for giving in a charity to a relative, a family member. You receive a reward for giving in a charity and you receive a reward for upholding the ties of kinship. While when you give in a charity to anybody else, the reward for a charity is secured. But there is no reward for upholding the ties of kinship. Okay? So if you have family members, if you have relatives here or abroad who are in need and you know that, go ahead and begin with them. Iftar al Sa'im, giving iftar, feeding poor people in Ramadan, any person, whether this person is in need or he's a guest and he's a rich person, you give him food to have iftar, you invited people. He invited the whole masjid, the whole community for iftar. 300 people. Um, 299 of them are well off. And only one person is poor. It's perfectly fine because the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ فَطَّرَ فِيهِ صَائِمًا كَانَ لَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِهِ لَا يَنْقُصُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَجْرِ الصَّائِمِ شَيْئًا This person was fasting, and now we give him iftar, food to break his fast on. He will be rewarded for his or her fasting and you will get the same exact word and that will not affect the word of the fasting person. With regards to the recitation of Quran in Ramadan, what did Allah the Almighty call this blessed month which started today in many countries and it started yesterday in many other countries? It is called Shahrul Quran. He said, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The main advantage, the main privilege 
of this month, it was chosen to send down the most marvelous word, the miracle of all miracles, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Imams, Imam Shafi'i for innocence, used to stop teaching and he would just sit and recite Quran. He used to recite Quran, he was amazing. He would finish the Quran once a day. You're not being asked to finish it once a day or once every three days, once a week, so that you finish it four times in Ramadan, or three times once every 10 days, or recite it once. I know that most of us are non-Arab, they may find it difficult, or working class people, or here or there. Make certain that at least you get to recite it entirely once. Now, you know, while you're reading, you have the urge of knowing the meaning of this ayah and the meaning of that ayah. Fine, mark it down and say later, later, inshallah, I will get to learn that. And mashallah, we have many programs to walk you through to learn how to recite Quran and understand its meaning. You know, I wish I can begin a live broadcast every morning after Fajr. Take one or three ayahs, one, two or three ayahs every morning. It will be sufficient so that all of us, all of the non-Arab will comprehend the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe. Um, I uh, want to go back to Sister Mona's question. Let me see if I can get her back. Uh, subhanallah. Yep, Sister Mona Alwi. She says, I'm a woman under 45. Is it permissible for me to perform hajj without mahram? Also, what is the dua for qiyamul layl? Okay. Let me uh, uh, answer your first question uh, about uh, the umrah. Then after the, we take a break, inshallah, because we're going to take a break in less than a minute. Um, performing Umrah or Hajj without a male mahram. There is a difference of opinion between the scholars. We all know that the vast majority of the scholars are of the view that the Prophet wasallam said it very clear that a woman who believes in Allah and in the last day shouldn't travel the travel distance without a male mahram. Well, Sheikh, if this is the case, so why there is a difference of opinion? That makes sense. That is because when the Prophet ﷺ prophesied that the time will come and a dha'ina, a woman will travel by herself from here to there and she fears none but Allah uh, or a person will travel without fearing none from Sana'a to Hadramaut but Allah and the wolf against his sheep and so on. So they understood from that that this is a travel which is as long as she feels safe and secure like traveling with a safe company. There is a travel agency, a group traveling for Umrah. Can I sign up with them? So Imam al-Shafi'i and others said yes. So accordingly, and according to some of the views, if you're traveling with a, a, a group or a safe company, you're not traveling by yourself, and obviously no one goes for Umrah or Hajj by himself or herself, for this reason it becomes permissible. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam and Allah knows best will take a short break. Inshallah, we'll be back in a couple of minutes to answer some more of your very valuable questions. Please stay tuned. We welcome you, month we all adore. We pray for happiness. The best stories are the stories mentioned in the Quran. The best speech is the speech of Allah in the Quran. And the best of all other human beings are the messengers of Allah. 
we would listen inshallah ta'ala to some beautiful recitations from verses in the Quran that talks about the messengers of Allah join us in Quran circle 4 we will do all of this by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy We welcome you, man, we all adore, we pray for happiness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Islam is the greatest religion of all. And I'm not saying this to be arrogant, but this is the truth. We have so great values in our religion that a lot of us as Muslims may not connect to join me every single day from the beginning of Ramadan with the exception of Friday in the first 20 days of Ramadan join me at 1400 hours at 2 p.m. in the afternoon in this new program of our values where Insha'Allah, we will discuss one of the beautiful values of Islam in each segment. Ramadan, welcome home of Ramadan, Ahlan Ramadan. messenger after a messenger after a messenger ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Prophet Nuh alayhi salam Prophet Hud alayhi salam Prophet Saleh alayhi salam Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Prophet Musa alayhi salam Prophet Isa alayhi salam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a series of the lights of guidance discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning from their lives going through this exciting amazing informative special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV where we will discuss together we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode learning from them pondering upon their experience meditating upon their life relating to it and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be discussing this series of lights of guidance so be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation so please join us on Huda TV I will be with you in this amazing journey wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, the second segment of uh, Sister Muni's question about the supplication to be recited upon getting up to pray uh, tahajjud. If you remember in the previous segment, I quoted a few supplications that the Prophet ﷺ used to begin every prayer with, and I said it is recommended. Okay, Aisha radiyallahu anha also narrated some hadith in this regard. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma said that whenever the Prophet ﷺ used to get up for tahajjud, he would recite the following dua: Allahumma laka alhamdu anta nuru al-samawati wal-ardi wa ma fihin. O oh Allah, praise be to you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and what is in both of them. Walaka alhamdu 
أنت قيم السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن And praise be to you You are the maintainer of the heavens and the earth And what is in both of them أنت الحق ووعدك الحق وقولك الحق ولقاءك الحق والجنة حق والنار حق والنبيون حق etc You are the ultimate truth and your promise is the ultimate truth and heaven is through, hellfire is through and meeting you on the day of judgment is through. I believe these supplications were mentioned in the program of uh, the Prophet's prayer for your reference for the sake of time so that we can take more questions insha'Allah. Tanvir uh, Hussein is asking, I have a small question, if a brother misses the Fajr prayer in Jama'ah because he was slightly late, so the Imam just finished uh, the Taslim and the brother entered the mosque. If I have prayed Fajr in Jama'ah, then can I pray with him with an intention of Nafl prayer? You mean leading him in the Fajr prayer? That's a good question. Okay. If you enter the Masjid and you find the Jama'ah is finished, any person who is praying, even if he is Masbuq, Yani, Somebody who came late as well and he had just prayed one rak'ah with the Imam and perhaps he has to make up one rak'ah. You can join the jama'ah with him according to the more right view and that counts as jama'ah for you. Also, somebody didn't uh, pray the sunnah and he got up to pray his sunnah, you can join the jama'ah according to the vast majority of the scholars behind this person whose intention is to pray nafla. He's praying the sunnah. Like maybe he didn't pray the sunnah before Fajr. He's making it up. It is permissible to make it up before sunrise. That's fine. Soon after you pray Fajr, you make it up. Somebody else entered and he joined you. Your intention is you're praying the nafila, the two rak'ahs before Fajr. And his intention is praying Fajr. That is valid. And that is the, 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 the correct view. And that is the opinion of the vast majority of uh, the scholars. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, the person hasn't prayed for weeks, months, or years, and he does make up the missed prayers by praying along with every prayer, two or three prayers. So if any of those people haven't prayed and he's making up a missed prayer, go ahead and join him as well. The good news, which I want to share with you, that in the hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever goes to the masjid to attend the prayer in congregation, But when he entered, as in your case, Tanvir, he found the imam concluded the prayer, go ahead and pray. Do not say there is no point, the jama'ah is finished. Because when you do, the Prophet said, you will still get the reward of attending the jama'ah. May Allah bless you and accept from all of us. Sister Shazia Umar is asking in Edmonton one masjid started Ramadan one day ahead of the rest of the people based on the observation done by the Canadian government. I have a question that whom we follow while uh, rest say that they will start Ramadan uh, the next day even though no one of us is sure that they will be able to see the moon or not. Okay, on that particular day uh, of course I answered the question to those who uh, texted me personally because they needed an urgent answer there was only like an hour left for Fajr in Canada and they said what to do some people say that we've seen the person they did it's a must to observe fasting if we trust those who saw the crescent then we must fast they're Muslims they're just then in this case one Muslim who is honest person says I saw the crescent then all of those who heard that person knew about it must observe fasting not only that if somebody got up in the morning and he was under the impression that you know they announced that tomorrow is the 30th of Sha'ban and we're not gonna fast but had they he heard that somebody saw the crescent and everybody's fasting you fast even though you've been eating you resume fasting and you can make up the day later on but fasting from the moment you have learned is mandatory. What is this mess exactly? There is no mess. It is very simple. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
وأفطروا لرؤيته when you begin fasting you begin fasting when you sight the moon one person sighted the moon one Muslim person sighted the moon confirmed so the whole people in the locality should fast in Houston Texas uh, today Dr. Salah Sawi and Mishka Center they took a picture of the crescent okay on the next day and it was big already mashallah and said look that must mean that it was born yesterday. And in California, some of our colleagues managed to see the crescent very clear. They went uphill and they were able to see it. So when they say, well, Brother Muhammad Faqir or Sheikh Walid Basuni or Dr. Salah saw the crescent, that's it. Don't tell me, well, in case A, in Saudi or in Mecca, they are not fasting tomorrow because they couldn't see the crescent. You guys saw the crescent, saw the moon, you must fast. Don't worry about the situation in Mecca or Medina or Cairo, Egypt or anywhere else. Rather, there are two opinions. One opinion which says that Wahdatul Matalah, since there is only one Hilal, one crescent and one moon, which means that if any person anywhere in the world happened to see it, then all people should observe fasting. And there is another opinion which says that every major community they could sight the moon on their own so what the people did in the Middle East in KSI in Emirates in here and there they went with the equipments and they couldn't see it so they said Wednesday will be the completion of the month of Sha'ban they are not blameworthy and people are not blameworthy but you in California somebody saw the crescent you must fast Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi Sister Zubaida Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Go ahead. Kef Halak, how are you? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh, I have a question about Tarawih prayer. Yeah. Um, during the winter prayer, if, I'm not sure if this has been answered before, so I'm sorry if you're repeating yourself, but um, during winter prayer, if you don't want to pray with the Imam during Tarawih and you want to still pray Qiyam later can you just sit down for Witr or um, um, I heard that you can pray Witr like in before he says the Salam you get up and you pray another Raga'ah is that allowed or not? Okay I got your question Sister Zubaida thank you so much Assalamu alaikum Brother Abdul Rauf from the KSA, welcome to Ask Huda and happy and blessed Ramadan to you and to your family, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Dr. Muhammad Salah, uh, Ramadan Mubarak to you, your family, and all ameen, the Muslim Ummah. Ameen, ameen. And I'm really pleased to speak to you after a long lull, in fact. I'm really sorry for that. Thank you. Jazakallah khairan. Go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, my question is. Uh, I wanted to know about uh, using the eye drop during the fasting hours. Is mm -hmm. it permissible or will, can it invalidate the fast or we can use them? Okay. Let me ask you, Brother Abdul Rauf, is it necessary? Uh, I was having red eyes from last couple of months and I was using, but I stopped it today. I did not use for the whole day. I, was, I just managed it without using them. Okay. Because if it is necessary and it doesn't go to the nostrils and you don't feel its taste it's permissible it doesn't invalidate right. fasting okay some drops you can feel that it is you can feel the taste even though uh, you drop it in your eyes uh, if this is the case no okay and also if you can avoid using it during the time of fasting it is better of course okay how is your mother Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. May Allah bless you and your family. By the grace of thank Allah. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah feek. Uh, Sister Zubaydah's question, and before I answer it, she said that I'm not sure if somebody have asked this question before. Yes, the question was asked so many times. And yesterday when we started Taraweeh, uh, you know, everybody's asking the same question over and over and over and over. And we don't get tired of answering questions. Why? Because إنما دواء العي السؤال as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said you don't know somebody else does so you have to ask those who know and you don't feel embarrassed or shy or reluctant to ask because I'm afraid that somebody may have asked a question but you didn't hear the answer you know it doesn't matter okay 
فالمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض The believing men and women are supporters and helpers to one another They enjoin one another to the truth and they forbid one another against what is wrong So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لا وتران في ليلة You shouldn't pray to witter in one night Why not? What is wit? He said in the hadith أوتروا فإن الله وتر يحب الوتر he recommended, highly recommended to pray witr by the end of the day and before dawn because Allah loves the witr. The witr is a prayer which ends with an odd number. It is not even. We pray dhuhr um, four rak'ahs or fajr two rak'ahs. These are all even numbers, two or four. Or, okay? So for the night prayer, pray as much as you want. But you want to conclude your prayer, make sure that it is either one or three or five and so on. And he said you shouldn't pray two witches in the same night because if you pray witch now in a couple of hours you pray another witch so the total number of prayers has become even not odd not witch it is shafa still what to do those who love to still pray when they go home go ahead and pray with the iman the witch too oh okay but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Make sure to keep the witr by the end of your prayer. And I still want to pray. Yes, just listen to the advice. Pray with the imam and after the imam finishes, pray extra rak'ah. So now you gain the quality of what the Prophet ﷺ promised in the hadith. مَنْ صَلَّى مَعَ إِمَامِهِ حَتَّى يَنْصَرِفْ كُتِبَ لَهُ قِيَامُ لَيْلَ Whoever attends the prayer with the imam until he wraps it up, until he finishes the prayer, it will be written for him the reward of praying for the whole night even though it was only one hour so those who leave and they do not pray with the imam they are at big fault they are missing a big reward oh, yeah, because their intention is good but you are missing the reward so what to do pray the witr with the imam and when he prays three rakas for instance you get up he makes a steam you get up without making taslim and you pray one more rakah now we have prayed for. He prayed the water as follows. Two rak'ahs, then one. You pray the one rak'ah with the imam, then you stand up for another rak'ah. Some people say, but when I stand up, I look odd. And people, oh, now he's you know, planning to pray to Hajjud and so on. What to do? You can pray the one rak'ah while being seated. Because it is nafila, and it is permissible to pray nafila sitting down, even if you're capable to stand up. Okay? Um, Montaz Kanum from the UK he's, hav he's having an interesting question he's saying that the question is long and he's saying that his daughter is doing uh, a Duke of Edinburgh award where she will be involved with the team in some sports can she skip fasting during these two days no brother no games tournament uh, soccer, basketball or whatever if it cannot be delayed it does not waive the mandate of fasting what Allah the Almighty said فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرَ you're not sick, you're not traveling unless if this is a journey they're traveling the travel distance so anyway she will be permitted to break her fast because she is traveling because of the journey not because we're having a game or having some sports or hiking or camping or any of that. The Prophet وسلم, when, while traveling during the month of Ramadan, he ordered the companions to break their fast. They were heading to Mecca, Fi uh, Fatih Mecca. So if you're fasting and you know you're experiencing fatigue, enjoy the concession, break your fast. But you're attending this game locally. You're not traveling. Okay, you're not allowed to break or skip fasting because um, you're having a tournament or uh, the Duke of Edinburgh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Um, Maryam Baba is asking, is it allowed for me to say istighfar and other azkar in my mind while in the toilet? Why? Anyway, we're recommended to make it quick. When you answer the call of nature, 
in these places where the angels do not hang around and it's full of Satan's you answer the call of nature you step out then you can make that the rest of the day okay it doesn't suit the occasion it doesn't suit the occasion so wait until you finish answering the call of nature then when you leave you begin by saying Ghufranak you ask Allah for forgiveness and then you can recite whichever azkar you want to recite okay um, Banhur Nasardinov is asking Nasardinov can you teach us the best dua to make for our brothers in Palestine yes thank you my dear brother Nasardinov uh, for bringing up this matter my brothers and sisters the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith for every fasting person at the time of breaking their fast a dua a prayer which will not be rejected Allah vows to answer your dua all Muslims whom we feel helpless we feel weak we feel oppressed and we cannot help our brothers in Burma or our weak and oppressed brothers the heroes the real heroes in Palestine you know facing the real terrorists and the barbaric regime in occupation forces in in Palestine then we should make dua for them may Allah grant them victory the greatest victory and may Allah destroy their enemies may Allah humiliate the perpetrators O oh Allah while fasting support our brothers and sisters in Palestine in Gaza enable them to defeat the Zionists and the enemies enable them to gain your victory your mercy and have mercy on the martyrs the shuhada who passed away and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their families and grant them patience also our brothers and sisters in Burma may Allah save their lives may Allah make them prosper and grant them victory uh, I hope inshallah everyone will remember their duty of making dua to all those who are in need those who are sick weak oppressed all over the world um, uh, Sister Fatima is asking us to make dua for her and her family and to get a job. May Allah make it easy for you during this blessed month of Ramadan. First, to guide all of us, you, me, and all Muslims, and to keep us steadfast and ease your ways, you and your family, and grant you a goodly earning and a halal risk and a halal job. Amen. Uh, there was a question here about I do not know Arabic. Can I recite the Quran by the meaning? Okay, do me a favor, um, brothers and sisters. I know that I'm talking to non-Arab. If you don't know how to read the Quran in Arabic, listen to it. Beautiful reciter, Sheikh uh, Abdul Basit, Sheikh Al Husari, um, Sheikh Minshawi, those great reciters. Also, along with the meaning, I think Darul Salam, a couple years ago, they came up with the whole Quran. You can listen to the great recitation and the meaning following every ayah. Do that. Why? Because listening to the Quran, as long as you're listening attentively, you're doing istima', not just hearing, okay, gives you the same reward as reading. So if you don't know how to read the Quran for now, listen, and inshallah, you and I will make a plan so that each and every one of you become not just fluent in reciting the Quran, become efficient in understanding the Quran as well. It was a beautiful beginning. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And I shall begin tomorrow, inshallah, not tomorrow. Friday is a day off. We have uh, Sundays through Thursday of every week. So inshallah, our next uh, live episode will be uh, on Sunday. Inshallah, the same time, 5 p.m. Mecca time, 2 p.m. Um, uh, GMT, 4 p.m. Cairo time. Until then, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.
Keeping my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keeping my heart your remembrance and in your deep.